Hello and welcome to week five of Social Media for Business. And this week we will be going over Instagram, my favorite platform. I love this platform. Uh, we will also be going over the social media marketing plan, just an overview of that. And then lastly, check-ins, discussions, and assignments. So let's dig into Instagram. So learning objectives of this lecture is to understand the business value of using Instagram for marketing, know how to create and optimize an Instagram business profile, understand the components of an Instagram post, know how to utilize Instagram stories and live video, and implement an Instagram content strategy. So just a quick introduction to Instagram for those who may not be aware or know or even you know, have heard of the history. It was founded in 2010 by Kevin Sistrom and Mike Krieger. Within nine months of launching, had over 7 million users. By April 2012, it had 30 million users doubled user base more quickly than any previous social network. And then it was purchased by Facebook for $1 billion in 2012. As of uh, about right now, um, the latest information I can find, uh, there is 1 billion plus active monthly users, 25 million plus active businesses, and 100 million plus photos uploaded per day. I remember when I was a, a user in 2010 and um, I, you know, I must have had like 20 friends on Instagram, it was super brand new, didn't think it would even become this big, and it has become huge. So marketing with Instagram, 60% of users say they discover new products on Instagram from following businesses, and 71% of US businesses are active on Instagram. Top 50 global brands post an average of 4.9 times per week. 75% of users take actions, such as visiting a website after looking at a brand's post. That's huge, 75% are going back to the company's website. 30% of users have purchased a product discovered on Instagram. I know I for sure have. Highest follower interaction rate among all social media networks. It's just really in easy to engage on this platform. So why do you have a business profile for Instagram versus a personal profile? You have the ability to schedule posts from third-party apps with an Instagram business profile, such as Hootsuite, access to Instagram insights on both posts and stories, you can share links in Instagram stories. You can run Instagram ads. You can go directly through Instagram or through Facebook since they're connected and they own each other. And if you for looking for instructions to create a business Instagram, if you're not sure how, you can click on this link here. So why a business profile continuing? You can generate revenue with Instagram shoppable posts. I'm sure you guys have seen shoppable posts here. Um, you know, you just click shop in the highlight section. This is what we call the highlight section. Or you can actually see the links here and go shop. They make it really easy for you to make a purchase. Additional features, contact buttons such as call or email, access to new features early, branded content feature to assist with compliance, which is located in the Facebook settings. So components of an Instagram post, obviously the photos, it's the number one component. It's all about visual on Instagram. 93% of buyers cite visual appearance as their main reason for purchasing a product. Instagram offers 40 filter options for photos. So you can either use the filters built in Instagram, you can use filters on your phone, filters from another app, and then you can upload the photo. There's so many different ways of using filters. Here's some examples of some brands that have really good images. This is Loom Cube, and they are a company that does lighting products for cameras. Uh, Patagonia has some pretty amazing photos, same with like National Geographic. Here's Better Buzz Coffee, a smaller mom and pop brand. This photo, it looks like it was just taken with an iPhone, but still good photo. Got some good engagement on here. Videos, so up to 60 second videos can be uploaded. Users can shoot video directly within the Instagram app or you can upload from your phone's camera. I always recommend uploading from the phone's camera just because sometimes if the reception or Wi-Fi is not that great, sometimes you can get some errors when you take videos from Instagram and sometimes it can take longer. So just in my experience, maybe it's my phone, I don't know. Um, but I always like to take the video on the phone first and then upload later. Videos can be trimmed and edited directly within the app. Again, I think the app's too slow. I like to do all that on my phone first. Um, some examples of some great videos are Lego, Jenny's Ice Creams, GoPro, of course, because they are a video uh, capturing product, and Charity Water. 
So if you're interested in seeing some cool videos, check out these uh, um, Instagram handles. So just a little Instagram exercise for you guys to do on your own. You don't have to turn this in. Search on Instagram for two to three brands that have good photos and another two to three brands that have good videos. Don't pick the same brands you did for the other exercises you've done in the past. And, um, oops, I mean, you guys don't have this. Please ignore this part of the book. There, we don't have a book for this in this class. But, um, yeah, just take a look around if you're not familiar with Instagram. Maybe you're super familiar with Instagram and you don't need to do this exercise and you follow brands a lot. But for those of you who may not have an Instagram account, I suggest making one and taking a look around and see what uh, other brands are doing out there. So captions is another component of an Instagram post and it's included for every picture or video. It can be up to 2,200 characters. However, shorter character count leads to maximize engagement. You guys always have to remember to keep your audience, you need to keep their attention. If it's too long, they're gonna get bored. They're not gonna read through the whole thing. Also, it cuts off in the user's feed only after a few lines of text. So you always wanna put the most important message first. Hashtags and brand mentions can be placed at the end or some people like to put hashtags in the comments. Either or works. I haven't seen any true evidence that one works better than the other. You can use emojis, which are super fun in Instagram. Punctuation, you can get creative with text, with line breaks, spacing, um, capital, using caps. You can ask questions, give shout out to other brands by tagging them by using the at, at symbol. Um, and there are many tools like cap, Captiona and Hemingway that help generate ideas for great captions. Hashtags. You can use up to 30 hashtags, post per allowed, but um, a lot of people say that five and 11 is the sweet spot. I personally use as many hashtags as possible. Um, posts with at least one hashtag average 12.6% more engagement. Use hashtags that are relevant to the brand itself. Hashtags will help add followers and popularity. Include trending or popular hashtags where relevant and always test the hashtags. Some hashtags you might get more response than others. I mean, not you might, you will. Now, however, Instagram has changed things recently. There are a number of hashtags that are banned and we call this shadow banning. If you want to learn more info about this, Google it or here's um, a link right here for a complete list of hashtags that are shadow banned. So this means you do not want to use these hashtags. They will not appear in various places within the app or search engines for specific hashtags. Some examples are hashtags popular, New Year's, push-ups, books, and like. And they're banned, which means you will not show up in people's feeds. Instagram does not like shadow banned hashtags. Why? I don't know. Why did they choose these? I have no idea. They're just shadow banned. So I'm just letting you guys know. Um, always be checking the complete list of, of hashtags on a regular basis so you don't start, you know, so you're not using them. My marketing pet peeve is the wrong use of hashtags. It kills me when I see family and friends not using hashtags properly. A hashtag is not a sentence or a paragraph. So if you put a hashtag, I don't understand what's the meaning of this long sentence, blah, 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 blah. That's not a hashtag. Okay. It's not a sentence or a paragraph. Hashtags are used to character, categorize the tweet or the Instagram post, such as March Madness. That's a hashtag. It's a category, right? For my basketball fans out there. Pities, that's a category. Type of, you know, uh, pities and pibbles, or nicknames for pitbulls, you know? Hashtags, okay? It's a category. Running is a category. Trail running is a category. Um, student is a category. Hashtags are click clickable links and searchable items. So say you want to, who, who's watching March Madness or you want to look at different brands that are posting about March Madness, you'd use a search, March Madness hashtag, and then you get to that hashtag and you see everyone who's posting about Ma March Madness. It's almost like it builds a little mini community. So search for hashtags relevant to your business or subject, such as trail running, mountain running, meal prep, adopt, don't shop, right? So if I'm trying to sell a product to trail runners, such as shoes, I'm going to look up that hashtag trail running, and I'm going to probably follow all those people who are posting in the trail running hashtag if I'm trying to sell a product to them. Hashtags track trending topics, such as Eddie would go for my surf fans, National Pizza Day, 
Create a hashtag for your business or subject, then keep checking on it. Oh my gosh, can you believe that? I spelled then with an A, with an A. sorry about that. Um, Elvis is King is a hashtag we created for, for one of our pit bulls. Um, he passed away, he's in doggy heaven. Coda Girl, another pit bull that passed away in doggy heaven. Trail Trucker, Let's Get Social, this is my branded hashtag for my Janovic Communications company. Ultra Buds, that's the hashtag for my running group, Ultra Buds. A call to action link. You cannot embed hyperlinks in the caption or text of the post itself in Instagram, which is super annoying, I know. You can only use the bio section um, to provide users with a URL link, and you can only put one in there. So this is what the bio section looks like on Instagram. You put your profile picture, your handle or name. Um, you can put little emojis in here. I have a little phone. You only get a certain amount of characters to write your bio and then you get one space for one link. However, even though you can only put one link there, thanks Instagram, there are third-party apps that you can download that when you click on this one link, more links can pop up, kind of like a landing page on a website. So I have that in here, so I click on this Insta bio link and it opens up another page um, and then I'm allowed to have multiple links. So I open up this page and I have one, two, three, four, five, six links that people can now click on. And you can put little uh, um, little icons next to it. Um, another third party app is called Linktree. They're pretty much all free, you download them, really easy to use. Instagram stories. So Instagram stories are posts featuring videos or images that disappear after 24 hours. Now that could be a good thing or a bad thing, right? Um, meant to be posted at a higher frequency over traditional posts because it's a story. So you might start in the morning and you might post stories throughout the entire day. Not meant to be perfect. You give inside or behind the scenes looks at businesses. It's great for, you know, if you're a winery and you're doing crush day or maybe you're a brewery and you're doing brew day or you're having an event and you want to post stories all throughout the day of the event. Maybe it's a charity event. Um, you can take photos and videos through stories, or you can upload photos or videos to stories. I always like to upload. You can upload bulk photos and videos to Instagram stories as well. You have the ability to add stickers, text, questions, date stamps, weather tag companies, hashtags, etc. Lots of different fun features in Instagram stories. I could do a whole lecture on Instagram stories, um, but I'm just going over the basics for this class. Analytics are available for Instagram business profiles, so you can see how many people viewed your stories. You can see who viewed your story as well. It's okay to post often at any time of the day since it's going throughout the entire day. Uh, you can save the story. So even though stories disappear within 24 hours, if you see a story that you really like, you can save it to the highlight section under your bio. Um, where's the highlight section? It's actually right under here. Let me see if I have an example. Here we go. Here's a bio section for an Instagram post. These section here is called highlights and you can actually put icons and name your highlights. Okay, where did we leave off? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry guys. Okay, so last thing was save stories highlight section. Okay, business promotions. You can use location and hashtag stickers to increase your discoverability. You can use links in your Instagram stories for business. You can tag other accounts and businesses. When you tag other accounts and businesses, it will actually show up in their messages and then they can repost as well. You can ability to add stickers, text, questions, date stamp, weather, tag com companies, hashtags, etc. So same um, as when it's not a business promotion. You can share polls, ask questions, countdown stickers, and gifts. So this is nice if um, you know you want to ask questions, and, and that's a great way. Or share polls; it's a great way to get engagement for your followers. And doing market research too, like, hey, we have uh, we're making a new shirt. Would you guys rather have the have this shirt in red or in blue? And you can post a picture, and you can share the poll, and the poll will be up for 24 hours. Instagram also has features called live video, and this appears within the Instagram stories. Um, and then they also have a feature called IGTV, which is the long form of vertical video content. 
So um, if you remember in the beginning of this lecture, I said you can upload videos up to 60 seconds. Say you have a video that's longer than 60 seconds. Well, you can upload it to IGTV because it's up to an hour long and it does not disappear. However, it does take a while to upload that hour long video. So let me uh, be prepared for that. Creators have their own channels, similar to a YouTube channel. Now they have IGTV channels. Content is fed based on accounts you follow and those you may be interested in. The benefits of the live video on Instagram is its news feed priority. Posting a live video will place you at the head of your followers' feeds. Increased engagement. Companies can respond immediately to client issues, answer questions, and host valuable discussions with their followers. Building relationships. The more you engage in authentic interactions with your followers, the more they'll trust you. Better brand identity. Filters, themes, and inspirational content all bring a company's personality to life. Some of the Instagram content strategies. There's a lot. So you have your Instagram stories, your live video, and your IGTV. You can post with a location, and you can also search for locations too. If you wanna start following people that live in your area, you can search for a certain location. Like I can search San Marcos. Okay, maybe I want I have a product that I wanna sell to moms. Where is a park in San Marcos? Okay, there's Double Peak Park. So I uh, search the location, Double Peak Park, and all these people who have posted their location to Double Peak Park are in my demographic. So I start following them and engaging with them. You can use tags, post consistently at optimal times, Post visually appealing content. I always tell people don't post just to post on Instagram. Make sure you have a visually appealing photo. If that's the, I hate that excuse, well that's the, the best photo I have. If it's a crappy photo, don't use it. It's better not to post a crappy photo, okay? Um, always make sure you have good quality photos. Regram user generated content. So if anyone tags you, repurpose that. That's great content right there. Engage with your audience. You can't just post and walk away. You need to actually talk to people. If someone comments on one of your posts, comment back. Or go out there and find people with similar hashtags, similar interests, and start talking to them. Um, I know when I, my client who's a race director, I go out and um, you know maybe I have a, a 5K race in September and there was a 5K race in July in the same area. So I'm gonna go to that hashtag. I'm gonna find all the people who ran the race in July because I want them to do my race in September and I'm gonna start commenting on their posts. Hey, you did that 5K, great time, congratulations, you finished, you know? Just start chit-chatting with them. Then they start following you and say, oh, these people are doing a 5K in September, I'm gonna sign up, right? Um, avoid over product pitches, use emojis. Emojis make it fun, Instagram is a fun platform. Experiment with different caption links uh, caption links, sorry. Provide a good mix of photos and videos. Boomerangs and hyperlapse. So boomerang and hyperlapse are different types of videos that are um, options in the actual app. You can ask questions, polls, run contests and promotions. I see a lot of Instagram photo contests. In fact, I'm doing one right now for my client. Um, winner gets a huge prize pack. Account takeover, say you have a brand and you have sponsored athletes, have that sponsored athlete take over your Instagram uh, account for a day or a weekend. Use an influencer to take over your Instagram account. Um, and you can advertise on Instagram as well. And through the Instagram stories, you can have ads pop up. Okay, so that's my lecture on Instagram. Um, again, there is a lot to Instagram, but I'm just going over the basic overviews kind of just like how the class is working here since there's so much to talk about in social media each week I'm just going over the basics and you might be wondering right now like hey are we ever gonna have to create accounts yes you will I'm gonna go over some more basic accounts and then looking at week eight is when you guys will actually start creating the accounts and playing with your own accounts so um, if anyone has a problem with that, creating accounts, please email me because this is a social media class so you should want to create accounts to learn how to use these platforms properly. Um, okay, so moving on. Social media marketing plan overview. This is the main project for the semester and you should be adding to this every week as you learn more in the lectures so that you're not all doing it all at once at the end of the semester because it is a pretty big project. So, social media marketing plan will include the following, an introduction, 
a social media audit, which we've gone over audit, personas, which we've gone over personas, strategy plan, content tools, we've gone over some tools, content calendar, that's mostly Hootsuite. So for those of you who have already done the Hootsuite certificate, you know all about content calendar, and recommendations. All of the exact information is in Canvas and has actually been published for a couple weeks now. So take a look at all that information. Um, this is just like the overview of it. Your social media marketing plan will include the following. Final marketing plan will be five to 10 pages with labeled graphics, charts, and tables. So it's not five to 10 pages of pure writing, guys. There's a lot of charts and tables and graphics that you can include in this, okay? So don't panic like, oh my gosh, I have to write 10 pages in a social media class. No, it's a lot of visuals as well. But your visuals need to be labeled. So if you use Word doc, you can use the figures um, un under, I don't know the exact um, tab up top, but there's a figures where you can um, label your figures. If you need help with any of this on how to label graphics, charts, and tables, reach out to the writing center on campus. You can just email them or call them and they'll be happy to assist you with that. Uh, I have a feeling the majority of you already know how to do this though. So this should look polished and professional. So make sure it looks visually good. Download a Word document template so that it looks clean. Use basic colors, fonts, uh, font sizes, all standard. Don't be any fancy with like this script in purple, okay? You're, so the key is you are trying to convince a CMO, a chief marketing officer, to implement your plan and strategy. Pretend that they hired you or you're part of their staff and you are creating the social media marketing plan that they should implement into their strategy. So you will have a rough draft due on Saturday, November 21st by 11.59. So you do have a lot of time right now, but do not wait until the last moment, okay? Um, I think this is before Thanksgiving? I don't know, that, yeah, this is before Thanksgiving. Um, and then that gives me time during Thanksgiving weekend. If you guys wanna know what teachers do during Thanksgiving weekend, they grade. That's what we do, we grade. And then I can give it back to you, give you comments, and then your final marketing plan will be due Monday, December 14th, okay? All right, week five assignments. We have your check-in five, which is a book recommendation, discussion five, which is Instagram strategy analysis, quiz three, Instagram, and your Hootsuite certification. Uh, I know a lot of you have already done the Hootsuite certification, which is great. So you will be doing an Instagram activity in here. And that's all I got for you guys for week five. So email me if you have any questions and have a great week.